Hello, today um, it's Thursday and I'm doing brake pedal and clutch pedal related things uh, on the Land Rover build. Last time you saw me, we were talking about, where were we? We were putting the engine together. Come on, we've gone way, way far since then. We've got that in there for a start. What do you think of that then? You come round here, you can see um, we're mounted in, the manifold's on, the turbo's getting ceramic coated, so the turbo is obviously not on. Um, we are making a bracket, because our regular alternator bracket lifts the alternator up into this position, which is fantastic with the regular turbos, but because we're putting a big turbo on, we're actually with, well, designed a bracket that just lifts the alternator 60 mil and it just gets it away from that diff a little bit because at the moment where it's sat the engine's where I want it but the worn bump stops on this vehicle chassis would allow the diff to contact the underneath of the alternator we're talking like 10 mil so if I put a new set of bump stops on it and fix it but it's probably going to be better to move the alternator up. However, the engine is basically complete. I'm just waiting on banjo for there and a throttle cable, some material to make some more throttle cable kits because I'm completely run out on my own build of all things. Um, but it's connected to the gearbox. Obviously, you didn't get to see any of that at all, but that's the adapter plate. Um, it's got one of our two-piece flywheels, the aluminium with the steel friction face. And today, I've just been testing out the clutch. Now, this is, I don't know if you can see the pedals in the video, but this is currently my clutch pedal. <laughs> yes, that is the brake pedal. Now, the reason for that is the clutch cylinder was uh, three quarters of an inch I believe and it only allowed the clutch uh, slave cylinder to move about 11 mil which is not enough to release the clutch so I noticed right next to it so I noticed this was the clutch one and this is the brake one so I noticed the brake one right next to it was larger larger bore and it turns out that they're an inch. I don't know whether that's a standard series part. Apparently it's standard on a series three without twin circuit brakes. It <laughs> still doesn't really mean much, but it worked. It made the clutch work perfectly. Amazing. So I'm gonna put two of those on, two new ones. One for the brake and one for the clutch. Right, so what? So why else is this all in bits? So if you come over here, I'll tell you. So the braking system is being upgraded. The vehicle is having two custom axles built, as I mentioned before, they're still not here. Um, we're cutting it close to the deadline now, but they look amazing. So I'm hoping even if they turn up on the last day and we don't have enough parts to put them in, they'll look good on the mantelpiece. So they're gonna have discs and non-power assisted discs with that large cylinder, to me, bad idea, I think. So this is basically a booster that we use for the clutches. So, you know, when you've got a heavy clutch pedal and you know, you just want that more modern car feel, add a booster. And this basically takes vacuum um, from the engine, from the vacuum pump. You feed your clutch pressure pipe that would normally go to the cylinder into there and then the one that comes out of here then goes to the cylinder instead so this basically goes intercepts your clutch pipe from the cylinder to the from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder this goes in between um, and that basically gives you a super light clutch it's amazing um, and we do sell those however like i say i have many many things out and the reason is i've been measuring because all of my bits, my kit bits and brake pipe pieces and things are metric. 
because I'm generally working on Mercedes. I know currently the workshop is full of actually non-metric things. I, mm, is the Defender metric? Maybe, maybe, probably not. But anyway, I didn't have the correct size fittings that I needed. So I've been going through all that and ordering all that because that's one of the biggest parts of any one of these builds. If you are wanting to get it done in a timely manner, you need to be ahead with the parts. It's all very well being the most capable car builder in the world, but if you don't have the bits, you can't do it. Right, so that's your update for now. Hopefully soon I'll have a bit of pipe work done, intercooled pipe work maybe, get the radiator plumbed up and things. We're getting closer, which is a good job because we've got less than two weeks. Bye for now. Right, good afternoon, a few updates for you. Two axles that have arrived from Design and Development Engineering Limited. Um, and I've got the piece of paperwork in front of me so I can explain what these axles are. <clears throat> well, they are, this one is a Series 3 case. And um, that one there, I believe is a Series 3 axle as well. And they've both been converted to disc because they have the bits to do that, which is exciting. Uh, and it, he's, here's a few specs from, from them. So it, they've both got 3.54 ratio ATB diffs in them. They've both got 300M HD heavy duty shafts. They've got heavy duty CV joints, uh, heavy duty drive members. I personally prefer a gold member, but whatever and a disc brake conversion, which you can obviously see. And that, that little pallet of goodness there, cost me over 8,000 pounds. Yes, 8,000 pounds. They've done a nice job of powder coating them and everything, they look nice. For eight grand, would I have expected vented discs? Maybe. I'll let them off on this occasion. Seeing as it's a series one and discs is an upgrade anyway. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let them off if they don't break. <laughs> right, and then moving on from the axles, here we go. We've got a couple of shafts. These have been upgraded. So this shaft, I noticed the other day, look how badly pitted that is. Like, have a close-up look at that. The actual shaft itself is very heavily pitted. And look at this. <laughs> Someone's done a proper sweet job of extending that. I love that. Um, so that were deadly. And these are quite thin walled. So um, I got Dunning and Fairbank, who we used to do shafts for us. And they did an amazing quick turnaround, a really nice job. They gave us some bigger joints, thicker wall tube. So this is three mil, 500 horsepower rated shafts. Uh, this is the rear one, this little one. And this bigger one, this longer one is for the front. So that's exciting, isn't it? Right then, moving on, what else have we got done? Slimline headlights, which will actually hopefully give some nighttime vision, unlike the original candles. Yes, they not, uh, they're not really in keeping with the original series looks, I get that, but whatever. Um, radiator, I cut the fan off to try and mount the charge cooler re uh, radiator in there, but unfortunately I can't, so I'm gonna have to weld that back on. Boosters on both sides, which I think I've already shown you. This one's for the clutch, that other one's for the brake. So from the top when you look in, you think, oh, no power assisted brakes or clutch. And it actually does. Um, what else? Oh, this, this is interesting. So 
I needed a position to put the charge cooler radiator. I can't get it behind the grill. I don't really want to impede the cooling efforts of the radiator because that would be upsetting. So what I've done is I've decided to utilize this space because literally nothing goes in there currently. If I wanted to put a winch on, then yes, I could maybe change something, but I, I'm not at this stage. So I've made some brackets and I literally was cleaning these up, ready to weld these brackets in here. Oh, if I can actually get it in. So I'm gonna mount it in here and then I'm gonna make uh, a cover plate that covers this so it looks really discreet that flips up to ram air into the cooler which will then obviously push it out the bottom so we've got some good airflow through it uh, but when it's parked whatever or you can have the flap down and it just looks like a cover i'm going to just do it matte black something like that but while i was doing this i found something which is quite exciting look here look the original chassis number is still in the chassis where i was going to weld my bracket 1168 i probably shouldn't say all of this 800 444 so if you want to clone my vehicle and use my chassis number that's it there let's see if it matches the one inside the on the chassis plate 1168004444 so it is the original chassis for the vehicle or at least somebody used a number stamp and stamped it into there to make it seem like the real chassis. Um, any other updates and things that we need to mention that's been done, changed or modified? I did some painting, didn't I? So, oh, there is, there is an exciting piece. Look at this, look at this. This is really cool. Now this is good for everyone 606 or 605 build. This part is really quite exciting. So because obviously we've gone high mount with the alternator, it caused a problem with the thermostat housing outlet. So what we've designed is, if you can actually look behind there, I'll give you a better look, I'll take it off. But if you look behind there, we've created an adapter which allows you to rotate that thermostat outlet pipe basically anywhere. You can go all the way around with it, you can point it up, you can point it down, you can point it backwards if you want. Um, and it literally has the o-ring in it and all that kind of stuff fully sealed so if you're doing a custom job even with the standard thermostat outlet it doesn't have to be our billet thermostat outlet that adapter will allow you to rotate your thermostat housing and that is exciting screamer pipes finished all the oil cooler in and out is finished uh, oil cooler turbo oil feed and return um yeah I'm waffling now, so I better get cracked on. Oh yeah, behind you, don't walk backwards. The charge cooler, which I've done in a nice sort of satin black two pack. That'll be nice and resilient. I've done the springs as well. So these are the old original springs. A lot of people said I should have gone parabolic. They were probably right. But I thought, well, this is now becoming a high performance vehicle. So I wanted firm suspension. <laughs> so uh, yeah. They look good though, don't they, painted? So tomorrow, should we show them the wheels? I, I was a bit disappointed about having to modify the wheels, to change the wheels. Why did I? Because apparently you can't fit the original wheels over discs, apparently. So we've gone for military, um, I think they call them wolf rims, military wolf rims. And they are like really, really, really thick. Like they're pressed out of like bomb proof material, like really thick. And they're heavy. The axles are going in. <laughs> the back one's on. Is that going okay? Um, well, I helped lift it up and then I was doing glow plug relay things. Is it in? Yeah. Yeah. Here, do you want to tap? Yeah. Tap my finger. <laughs> when we've bolted these in, prop shafts can go in. Um, and then 
I really want to put the wheels on, but we can't really put the wheels on. We've got brake pipes and things to do. Not a problem. Good afternoon. Uh, we're post pizza, so it's afternoon. I'm trying to work out where to put this heater unit. Literally, the length of it is causing me grief. It can't really go there because it's stuck out too much. Considered putting it there, but then it's too low. Can't put it in there because that's where the battery box is. Um, no. Because if you didn't have a heater, you wouldn't have this problem right now. Yeah, but can you imagine? Like a vehicle with no heater. It's not a good idea, is it? Like in winter or whatever. I feel like that's a luxury and you should focus on, you know, getting wheels. But the cooling system runs through it, you see. So I'm keen to get this sorted now. Rather than struggling later and trying to retrofit it. Just trying to get it in somewhere is really quite difficult. It doesn't want to go in this vehicle. Considered there, like pointing, okay? pointing up, so it would go like into the actual tunnel. You wouldn't really know it was there. It would just smell of gearbox oil whenever you turn the heating on. And there isn't like a fascia plate for it either, which is not great. But it'd be easy to fit, it'd be like two screws. And I'm like enjoying the easy to fit options at the minute. Yeah, there's no room there for it for the gearbox. I don't think it'd do you any favours from a heat point of view either. Put it there, where the centre seat would normally be. <laughs> uh, The, yeah, the battery goes in there though. Unless I move all the battery back. But even if I put it in there, it's still... <laughs> Best option. That is like your only option. Where am I going to put the battery then? Behind it? The battery, it. it's too high. Um, Put an Optima battery on its side in there. Do that then. <laughs> Just want an easy option for once. You want heating in an old series. That's where you went wrong. There's probably like a kit out there where people just oh, they do that all day long, lad. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> just fasten right, it. I'll leave that with you. Yeah, Let's bye. Bye. video update people so <clears throat> as you can see it's the weekend it's a sunday it's very quiet in here <laughs> so this is how i get stuff done um when it comes to crunch time and i have a lot of work to do i have to come in when no one else is here because obviously you can imagine trying to run a busy business you're not going to get anything productive done so what have i been on with well yesterday i was in uh, and I was getting the cooling system finally plumbed up, that like totally boxed off. I made a bulkhead fitting um, piece of aluminium plate with two stubs welded to it for the, for the coolant. So that side goes round to the thermostat housing. This pipe here is going to go to the header tank, which I'm going to mount when the wing's in. Um, and obviously that one there goes onto the back of the head. You can see there's like an L shape. And then inside... I've mounted a heater just onto a piece of aluminium bracket. Nothing fancy because this is series one. And then what am I on with today? Well, this unit here, which you can see, is a, I suppose you could call it like a solid state relay. Um, it has a separate control panel with eight functions, eight switches, and you can switch on, um, you know, whatever you want to connect up to it. So lights, fan, charge cooler pump, whatever. So I spent some time last night uh, when I got home creating some little lists for myself 
to fit the conduit and then very basic wiring diagrams where the wiring needs to be. That's for like the lighting and the accessories. And this one is for sensors. And then this one is for the key. So that I could come in today and hopefully <laughs> not get mind blown by it and be able to just follow my instructions that I've made and boom, 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 just get it done um, and get that task out of the way. Because once I can get all that stuff switching on and off, I've just got the charge cooler pump to mount and then the wings can go back on, I think. That's pretty much going to be it. So we're getting close, but time is running out. Like I say, today is Sunday and this dyno event that this is going to is next Saturday. So, and it's a three day, it's like a bank holiday week. How's it going? Well, it's Sunday. Um, I'm kind of pushing to get it done. Whether I'm actually doing a decent job or whether I'm actually just losing my mind at this point, I don't know. But I've got lots and lots of the bits wired. I'm making an earth splice here. It's kind of the solder line is so, so hot. What have I wired up so far today? I've wired up, I've made an earth terminal, welded that onto the chassis. Um, and there's a separate earth for every item. So I've got an earth for the charge cooler pump. I've got earths for the headlights. Can I put this on there? Yeah. I've got an earth for the fan. I've got an earth for the horn. Everything has its own earth. Starter motor, wiring to the key and to the glow plug relay because the glow plug relay recognises the starter motor has been triggered to turn the glow plug relay off. Uh, what else? The, all the conduits are up. So, bulkhead, <laughs> bulkhead down to chassis um, and central console to the right hand side of the console. My little module thing is in. So, basically, everything I'm connecting up now, all those wires, are this seven core here, which are going to take up seven channels. Yes, 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 you can, of course you can. There are seven channels of the eight channel box. But my diagrams last night are actually really helping. Because like, when I get to a point where I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I just look at it and I've actually written, connect number one, blue, to this. Okay, I just do it. There's the other bit, there it is. I keep referring back to my... <laughs> I used your colours, girly, to make my wiring diagram. Why? It was just so that I could, you know all the wires? Yeah. That I've put in the car, all yeah. these coloured wires? Yeah. Well, I drew them all on this piece of paper so I know where they all go. Oh. But I had to use a few of your pens. That's okay. Thanks. Who put it all there? Me, I did it last night. And you put up here? Yeah. Who um, put down here? Yeah, and um, we tested out the horn, didn't we, this morning to make sure that worked? Yeah, yeah this is. Very fine. Very fine. Very fine. Very fine. Very Hello. Probably wondering what have you got going on here? Well, this nicely painted intake charge cooler system is too difficult to get the hoses on underneath and I hate making things that aren't easy to look after. So I'm going to modify it and I'm going to make them 90 degrees. So I'm currently grinding the paint off um, without scratching the rest of the unit, which is always good fun, isn't it? Um, 
let's go and have a look at the, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this stuff, I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to try and weld these on, at, like I'm going to have to do like a 45 degree angle and weld those on at a right angle so that they, this way, so that they come out of this side so I can simply put some hoses on because at the minute I can't get underneath. No, no, the water pipes. It's the, for the water cooling to circulate around, so it won't make a difference from like a power point of view. It just it'll make it'll make it possible for me to get the pipes on and off, basically. Because at the minute, I tried, and it's just gonna it's just gonna end up scratching and ruining everything if I if I proceed. And also, there's so much going on at the back of the engine in this area, look, that you know these are getting in the way. So those pipes that would come immediately down would smack straight down on top of there, which is no good. So I want the two to come out here and then I can connect them on. Cause like, this is the thickness of pipe that I have to connect onto it. So, uh, so this morning I've got the alternator wire on, um, boost lines in to control the wastegate, uh, a lot more wiring into the cabin. So we've got things like EGT, sensor wiring which is this heat protected one this is wheel speed sensor which is here you can see i've got the drum brake off we're gonna to have to make a, a trigger point for the drum um this thick one here this seven core that's carrying all the engine sensor wires like oil temperature water temperature charge cooler water temperature rpm they're all in there um i've got a wire for the wiper i've got a wire for the heater uh, I've also been messing around with this. Um, you can see quite a lot going on here. We've got the, the pipes for the turbo smart wastegate, We've got our EGT probe sensor and the alternator wire and they all tuck nicely in to keep this looking old school and original. So they all tuck in underneath the engine as you can see, but obviously the screamer pipe, if you look how close that screamer pipe is to the, to the loom, so I've wrapped it in a, a heat proof, uh, that sort of silver bit that you can see, uh, in a heat proof coating, so that when that screamer gets hot, it's not gonna be conducting the heat directly onto those wires and pipes and damaging them. Um, what else has gone on this morning? The yeah, the brakes are bled up, the clutch is bled up. Uh, we've still got vacuum pipes to connect to these. We need to put some covers over these. Uh, I still am going to do an airbox system, so this is what I'm thinking with the airbox system. This is a four inch adapter, as you can see. The turbos are normally three and a half, or the turbo smart, uh, uh, Borg One Rest 200s. So this adapter we've made to make it four inch, it's got an O-ring inside, and that allows you to connect four inch directly onto here. So I'm going to bring a four inch bend out through the wing and then inside the wing area here, I'm going to bring it back round and have the air filter sort of here inside the wing. And then I'm going to cut this side of the wing out so that as air is coming along and been forced onto the grill, it'll push it into like a letterbox style slot on the inside here into an air filter, which will have a shroud around it to stop wheel dirt and stuff flinging up. Oh, there's a lot of stuff and my aluminium sheet has arrived for me to be able to make this lifting section. Um, yeah, lots to do, lots to do. Brake light wiring still to go in, vacuum system still to go on. How many days? Two left. Something like that. <laughs> Bye for now. Um, yeah. Yo. Install it. Ooh, they do look good. I didn't even look at them when I just asked you that question. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they do look good. You've totally got the best job there, really. You made your shiny plate, and now you're going to install the nice instruments. <laughs> that does look. That does look really, really good. I'm liking Maximum that. Maximum impact, but like the least amount of actual like under the car getting dirty. Necessary. Yeah. Break. Just it's the that. only piece that people are going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> They're literally all going to like look at it and go, ooh, that was nice. There's me, hundreds of hours in. I don't care what I did.
I'm in a bad mood. Well, I'm not in a bad mood because I've found the problem, but I've been pissing around with this solid state relay thing because I fucked up. Basically, I thought, if, if you look at this, there's eight channels, but there's 16 wire connections, 16. And I thought, that's very kind of the Chinese to have given us two connection points for each one. So you could put like one accessory in and then if you just needed to piggyback it, you could put two in. That's not what they are. <laughs> one's an egg and one's a pause. And guess what? I put every single accessory in an egg and left the positives blank. What a fucking nightmare. <laughs> so when I wired it all up and turned it on, I was like, why isn't this working? They're all in, they're all correct and blah, blah, blah. One of them, I did use the terminal next to it because I had two wires to go in. So the back lights came on. So I was like, if you actually get the camera right underneath, you'll see, you can actually see, you can see the positive and negative signs, which I did not look at. There you go, look. And I put it in the negative of everyone. What an idiot. That's what happens when you're rushing and you're stupid. <laughs> right, so I'm putting it back together now. And that means that hopefully if I turn the ignition on now, the uh, all the lights and everything should work. Shall we find out? Yeah, that's dipped. That's main. Oh, look at the difference. Dip, main, <laughs> both round. <laughs> um, and apparently there's a way of making it, hang on, just a minute. Oh God. Right, and then I have to press that three times. Right, here we go. How cool is that? Why would you ever need that? If you were doing big recovery with it being a recovery vehicle. How sweet is that? I wonder what happens if I change the horn so it does that. <laughs> That's ace. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I feel like we've had a little victory. Something works on it, doesn't it? How cool is that beeping horn thing? Sounds like it's that, a sound like, sound, yeah. doesn't it? It's got to that time of night and, and I've had to resort to um, fastening this new tank gauze on with a Jubilee, well it's not even a Jubilee clip, I don't even know what it is. Tried soldering it, it won't work. I can't solder for shit, like I'll be honest. But the dash is in and we're about to try and fire it up. That's why we're doing that. Look at that. Ta-da! So you can set where you want your shift lights. So if you want it 5,000, shift light two, five, five, three, six. Nice. <laughs> I love how like sharp it is. Bang, bang, bang. Oh yeah, the well, the proper mm, like weight that. gauge. Nighttime they level. keep up well. Daytime level. Oh, so is that going to work off the clock then, considering you've got no external light input? Is it going to clock in that? Otherwise, how does it know nighttime level and daytime level? Good question. Must have a clock in that screen, I bet. Mm. Probably won't be that clear, but... That's the charge cooler pump. It is. That's a fan. Cooling fan. blow a fan <laughs> that's amazing can you imagine if you're in a rainstorm and that was your only hope <laughs> <laughs> you'd be knackered wouldn't you <laughs> i love that one and this one's a free channel i haven't got anything in that one It's like quite an awkward height to lift them. What's that? This is the wheel. And these are the wheel nuts. How many wheel nuts are holding this wheel on? How many? Three. No, not three. Five. 
That's right. Well done, Georgia. Bye. And these wheel nuts are 27 millimetres. That's the size of them. And it says there on my socket, look. That's how I know that I've got the right socket to put on the wheel nut. Well, when I finished it, I'm going to try and start it, Gail. You go to front, see what happens. It's really hard to do at the same time. that pipe at the front, the little one hanging out the front. Just see if... Is it sucking? Is it sucking? Is it sucking now? And they off. The off switch works as well. Yay. Sweet. So what's Rob making? Oh, an air intake system? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Something way less interesting what than that. It? Have a look. So basically this thing here is the booster. There's one for the booster for the clutch and one booster for the brakes. But the problem is with having a booster in your wheel arch, you see this little intake here, when you are applying it, you're going to end up with a uh, vacuum sucking into there at some point, which is pretty bad because if it sucks water in, you know, as your wheel's spinning round, it'll suck it up your vacuum tube, round all the vacuum tubes, and then into the engine. And then mm. it would damage the engine. Well, it's the end of Tuesday, Wednesday, end of Wednesday, sorry. We're dangerously close now. Um, so the boxes to protect the boosters are in. Um, which I'm really happy with. They cover up the rust on the bulkhead nicely. Uh, the boost system is all connected now. Um, one of the boost connections still needs to be done. The charge cooler plumbing is pretty much done with the exception of the, <clears throat> the radiator which is under here. I'm just in the process of making the hinge system for that, for the lift section. Um, the header tank for the coolant is mounted in the wing because there was no room anywhere else so it's been mounted in some angle that's, yeah. <laughs> Brakes have been bled. Um, oh, it has a gear knob and a weird sleeve over it, which is quite strange, but I suppose it keeps it protected for now. Um, so what have we got left to do? We need to pack this up a little bit because the seat, I think, comes too close to the battery. Um, we need to put, the, obviously, the doors back on. We need to put the wings on. Um, we need to put, finish putting the wheels on. Um, Rob's just making some brackets for the windscreen at the top there. Um, I've got to finish off that flap, but yeah, what else have we got? Uh, air intake, air intake needs to be done, shield for air filter is part of the air intake, lift flap I'm doing now, windows hopefully we'll get some perspex tomorrow, side lights to connect, what else have we got on the back, uh, strap on the top of the bonnet, rad brackets, seats, speed sensor wire. Yeah, we're getting there though, and it looks really cool, which I'm really excited about. Oh, all the roof's been sealed as well, so there was some quite big holes and cuts in the roof where water was just leaking through, and Jonathan's nicely sort of sealed them off with some Seekerflex, which will do the job, stop me getting wet. <laughs>